Uh, I greet you all. My name is Ekpesi Pomindas. I just want to make a video um, about electric circuits, um, primarily for grade 12 students, physical sciences, paper one, NSC, CAPS system, CAPS curriculum. Um, yeah, so this is not too in depth as uh, the university. But it's enough to prepare you to do well in your question paper and in this video I'll just like to cover the theory of the background and um, in another video we'll look at two question examples where you can apply what we have learned here and um, yeah so let us begin so the first thing we'll do we'll look at a definition of we'll look at a definition of what is an electric circuit so an electric circuit is made up of charges moving within a closed loop and electric and in, elec in, in an electric circuit we have charge we have current flowing and what is current current is charges in motion from one region to another so charges moving from one place to another form a current and in our study of electric circuits as we do it in NSC Grade 12, we use a standard called the conventional current, which is basically that di we this is the way we assign it the direction of the current. It's called conventional current, and it's basically the direction in which positive charges would flow. So now we want to look at a mathematical definition of current. So this expression here gives a mathematical definition of current, and basically what it means is that this here says that current is a rate of change of the charge so this symbol here you should know is delta and it represents change and what this means if you need char the charge at some initial time t and you need charge at some final time t and then the delta just means final charge minus initial charge divided by fi final time minus initial time would give you the current. This also means that um, if you had a graph of charge versus time with charge Q, this is Q here stands for charge and it's measured in coulombs, T here stands for time measured in seconds and coulombs per second is amperes which is the SI unit for current. We just write it as A when we write out our, our current. So when you have a graph of Q versus T where Q or charge in Coulomb would be the dependent variable, the y-axis, versus the T time as the independent variable on the x-axis, then this tells you that the gradient of that graph will give you the current. So now moving along, we want to define what the EMF, also known as the electromotive force, which is not really a force. The MF is basically the voltage available in the battery to perform the work in the circuit. It is the total voltage when no current is flowing through the circuit. So it's the total voltage when no current. So what, what this means is that the battery has a total voltage that it carries. For example, 12 volts. But the moment you switch the, put the switch on and this current flowing, there is a, a limited potential or voltage that can be provided to the circuit. For example, if you have a 12 volt um, battery, that the 12 volts would be the EMF. But when you switch a switch on, only 11.7 volts are being used. And partially, that is due to internal resistance, which is basically the resistance contained within the material, the battery. It's resisting charge, so not for, not all of the maximum capacity of the battery can be used up in, with, to perform work in the circuit. So that's basically EMF. And um, moving on, we want to define Ohm's law. So the main expression students, or as students do remember for Ohm's law is R equals V over I. It's very nice and easy to remember. 
But we, if you were asked to define Ohm's law, how I, how, how you should define it, or how the best way to remember it, define it, is that Ohm's law states that the potential across the terminals of a resistor is directly proportional to the current through the resistor, provided the temperature is constant, provided the resistance is constant. I didn't put temperature here, but provided that's a condition. And I think this is easier to, this, this, in this form, it is easier to see what I've just stated here, that the potential difference Ohm's law states that the potential difference of the voltage across the terminals of a resistor it is directly proportional to the current through the resistor provided the resistance is constant provided the temperature is constant. See, I just wrote it down here. Ohm's law states that the voltage between the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current in the conductor provided that the resistance in the conductor remains constant. And provided the temperature remains constant remember I would, I would suggest mention temperature I would suggest major on the temperature you know you can rather substitute this word for temperature so Ohm's law states that the voltage between the terminals of or the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current through or in the conductor provided the temperature in the conductor remains constant and we can see it from this expression V equals I times R. If you increase V, if you increase I here, V is also going to increase, you know, and this R we would look at it as a constant. Okay, moving along, we want to look at the internal resistance. The internal resistance of a cell or a battery is a resistance within the material that, resi that results in the terminal potential difference being less than the EMF. I've, I've touched on this briefly when I was talking about the EMF um, so every material or every battery comes with some internal resistance which is basically the resistance to the flow of charge that it has because of its chemical composition its chemical makeup you know it, it cannot deliver the 12 volts if it's 12 volts it cannot completely deliver the 12 volts because of the material so if that material has some resistance that it naturally gives intrinsically produces so then only a certain limited amount of voltage can naturally be delivered for the rest of the circuit to perform work so i made an example earlier you can have a 12 volt battery only delivering 11.7 volts um, you know because there's internal resistance and there's an expression I, I very, I'd like to remind you here is that about the terminal potential difference so if you have um, a resistor and we just label its points A and B or the ends of a battery we can label them A and B then the voltage across the terminals the terminals of the ends of it which we have called N B is equal to the EMF which we we can write as the symbol epsilon minus I times R. This R here is the internal resistance and I is of course the current. So what this means what this expression tells you we can also write V A B as V terminal or V term which is the voltage across the terminals must be less than the epsilon this tells I mean than the EMF this tells you that the terminal voltage is less than the EMF by this value I times R so to get the terminal velocity the terminal voltage you take the EMF subtract I times R the current multiplied by the internal resistance this is a very important formula you should remember um, you can manipulate it to work out so for example you, you might have the R you might have the internal resistance given you might have the EMF given and you might just be needing to work out 
B, A, B, and I, you know, through different scenarios, which we should get to more when we do the questions. Now we want to look at power. Power is a rate at which work is done. And power is, it can also be defined as the rate of the change of the energy. So this here, power is the rate at which work is done. Power is the rate at which um, energy changes so with time. So this, these definitions work because work is in joules, energy is in joules. So power is in joules per second because this T here is second. Joules per second are watts. The units is watts. The SI unit for power is watt. So this is the definition of power. I expect you to grasp it and remember it and know it because in many applications of physics it occurs. So you just need to know when, what the definition of power is and to know this. It will help you in many scopes of physics. Um, it might even help you in your electricity problems but okay we will for this specific case of electric circuits the main expression for power we don't look at power in this form we look at power in terms of the variables and the, that we work with and the variables we work with is voltage current and resistance so the main expression I want you to remember for power is P equals V times I Although I think you might be given these in your um, formula sheets, it's also good to know it for yourself and understand it. So yeah, you can remember P equals V times I. And um, you can work out, remember we work with three variables here, voltage, current, and resistance. So you can use, you can have power in any of these variables in terms of voltage and current voltage and resistance or current and resistance and you need to be able to manipulate or decide which one of these to use based on the scenario but how you can you can if you have this P equals V times I you can get the other forms easily you just need to recall that R equals V over I or V equals I times R as we've done earlier over here and so, for example, here, if you've got the voltage and the current and you want to have, for example, current and resistance, so you can keep the current, replace this V. And we said V equals I times R, so replace this V with I times R and you get this expression. Now you have current and resistance, you just want resistance and voltage, so you want to get rid of the current, so get rid of the current, current is V over R. You get you substitute that and you get this expression now we move on to the um, climax sections of the theory um, some of the most important and um, so here we want to look at resistors in series and resistors in parallel and uh, so you might need a picture for this and I will definitely look okay yeah we have one so so resistors in series they're connected along one another so in like a chain you can connect like this this is a series pair because this is like a chain, it's like a, it's connect these resistors here that are connected like this are like along one another. But then you have resistors in parallel that are in this fashion. They are, they are parallel to one another instead of alongside one another. So for example, this and imagine for a second that this 10 ohm resistor is not there. This R and this 15 ohm resistor, they are alongside one another. But if you look at this 15 ohm and this 10 ohm, they lie in one per in one in a single axis, a single vertical axis going down like this. 
and they are parallel to one another. If you were to look at this R and this 0 0.2 ohm resistor, you would see that these are also in series. They are along a single path. But these ones, they are parallel. They are along an axis. They are not along a path. They are along an axis. So in, along an axis, parallel, along an, an, uh, a path, along a path, like path is for, like as I'm encircling, then you know it's in series. Along an axis, parallel. Okay, so when you deal with these problems, you have to understand that there's, there's different in how series circuits and parallel circuits work. So, um, in a series circuit, you have to you have to know or remember or understand that the current is the same in all resistors. So, if this R is in series with that resistor, the current passing through here is exactly the same value of current passing through here. And if you had another resistor over there, we'd have the same current passing through here. So A1 equals A2 equals A3. So if this was current passing here was A1 and current passing here was A2, then they would be exactly equal. That's one thing you should know about resistors in series. But resistors in series have voltage that is additive. In other words, um, to get the total voltage in a series circuit, you need to add the voltage of the resistors with in that series circuit. So if this was V1, if this resistor here had voltage V1, this resistor, this resistor here had voltage V2, then to get the total voltage within that series path, it would be V1 plus V2. And that's basically what this part says. And that's something you should know about series circuits. So number one, the current is the same throughout all resistors in a secret series circuit. Number two, the voltage is additive. The total voltage is the sum of all the voltages in the series part. And remember our definition, we said V equals I times R. So if we say V1 is I times R1 and V2 is I times R2, V3 is I times R3, we get this. And we factor out the common factor would be I and we get this expression. Now the last variable is the resistance. So we've said the current is the same for all um, elements in the series circuit the voltage is the total voltage is the sum of all the voltages and now we want to look at the resistance so how we can work out the resistance um, you don't probably you don't need to you don't need to know this you need to know more, know this part though the green part but I so let me just briefly run through this so how would you you've got the voltages now how do you get the resistance? Divide by I. So if we divide this total voltage here by I, we divide by I, we get to this. And so you have to know that the total to get the total resistance in a series circuit, just add the resistances of the resistors together. So then add the resistance. If this resistance R1 and this is R2, in a series part, we add R1 plus R2. And um, let's just move on to parallel circuit resistors in parallel. So in parallel, we've said resistors along an axis are not in instead of being along one another. First thing we say here is the voltage. The voltage in, in parallel circuits is the same. So the voltage in this, if this is a parallel connection section, the voltage in this resistor is exactly the same voltage passing through this resistor and the um the parallel connection it allows that current splits or has different alternative parts so current can flow through this part and current can flow, flow through that part and because the current has alternative parts or current splits we find that the current in a parallel section is not the same you know, the current passing through is not the same here but it is additive so it means you to get the total current in this parallel section you would have to add the current passing through this and the current passing through that but then okay I'll make 
one more point at the end. So, so that's the second thing. The current in the parallel section, you just add the current passing through each resistor, and you have to remember the resistance of a parallel section is the is obtained by the reciprocal. So reciprocal is just one over something. 1 over RAQ equals 1 plus 1. You get this. And of course you would have to solve for REQ here. Make REQ the subject of the formula. Because as it is, REQ is not the subject of the formula. You have the inverse or the reciprocal of REQ. And that's not, that's not the same as REQ. So you still have to work out REQ. Of course you would do that by multiplying by uh, REQ on both sides of this equation and yeah and, and, and solve for REQ I believe you competent competent to do that so when you have only two resistors in um, in parallel for example like this instead of three so we can simply yeah, get a simpler expression for REQ that is in terms of REQ instead of the reciprocal or, or the inverse of REQ and how we do that, we just basically use our fractions and basic mathematical, basic algebra. So you have R1, R2. And of course, if you were to add, want to add these together, you have to get a common denominator. So you multiply by R2 here, multiply by R1 here. That's basically how you get this expression. And But this is still in terms of the reciprocal of REQ. And you solve for REQ and you get this expression. This is an expression I would advise you to remember. Um, it's quicker, but you can of course re-derive it if you forget to this. Um, and and from the fact we're, that we started with that in a in a parallel connection, the voltage is the same across each resistor. So it means if this is R one and R two here. The voltage here would be I1 times R2. The voltage here would be I2 times I1. I mean, the voltage here would be I1 times R1. The voltage here would be I2 times R2. So then you have these expressions. But those values are exactly the same. And we can simplify that into this expression. This is also another expression you can remember. It can come pretty handy. Now with all this being said, one technique that we usually use in dealing with these questions is this for any combination of resistors you can find a single resistor to replace the combination or the resistance of the resistor is referred to as the equivalent resistance of the combination so what this means sometimes in these problems it is easier to 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 um simplify or decompose um, sections of the circuits into a single um, resistor. So, uh, for example, this parallel circuit, you can add these resistances together um, through this approach that we have shown you. I've shown you here, and then you can get the value, and that value would be the equivalent resistance. It's called the equivalent resistance of this parallel section. So, equivalent resistance just means the total resistance of some section or branch of the circuit or the entire circuit could be just means total circuit total resistance so you can sometimes it might be easier to decompose these resistors instead of having two resistors into one by adding them together adding them together according to what you have learned for parallel and then redraw it for yourself in your exam with these as one and you would be now essentially you'd be looking at a resistor, a, a, a series circuit, and it might be easier to work with the circuit in that way for some problems. So that covers the theory for now in um, in terms of preparation. So in the next video, we'll be looking at some examples. Thank you.